Hi, this is Heidi and Rod from Garden Crossings, and we are up at the Northern Michigan Garden, and we are transforming our planters today for fall. So let's take a look and see what Rod's gonna do here. So on this planter, we had, this is our summer planter right now, and it's got the fireworks grass in it, along with some ivy, there's some cladium, and also sun patients in here. And even though it still looks very nice, we just were ready for a change and for a different look. So we'll see once what he's gonna do with this planter. Um, he's gonna first remove the cladiums and the sun patients. And once he gets those removed, we'll see if there's any room for him to plant anything else in this planter. So this is one of our crescent planters, which is a self-watering planter. Uh, in the base of the container, there's a water reservoir. So that's what holds all the water. And then this here is the drop-in insert, which we set into the container that then kind of sucks the water up through the legs up into the soil area. So once those get removed, it looks like there's room for things to be planted. It'll just be a matter of, is the grass gonna cover it all up? Or will we see what goes into this container? So the one thing when you are using self-watering planters, you'll probably find that certain plants really are gonna just take off and grow well in the containers. Other plants may not do as well. So what you need to make for sure when you are choosing your selections is that you're choosing plants that do like to stay fairly continually moist because realistically, as long as you're refilling these planters, you know, every, every week or a couple times a week, depending on where we're at in the summer, your plants are gonna be constantly getting moisture. So for plants that like to dry down a little bit, these self-watering planters aren't always the best idea. And you can see here that that penicetum grass really loved it and is quite large right now. So Rod's kind of choosing from our pile here of different options. And right now he's just kind of setting them in there just to kind of get an idea of what it looks like. The one thing that we're not really struggling with, but thinking is that grass, because it is so large, we're really not gonna see the plants a lot. Uh, but we decided because we have them here, we might as well go ahead and plant them in just to give kind of an extra, just a little splash of color here underneath the grass. Now, obviously if we were at the greenhouse right now and had all the selection in the world, we would probably look for some maybe more green like what he just put in there um, of the heuchera or heucherella because they're going to stand out just a little bit better up against the dark contrast there of the grass so he's just kind of checking out his options and i bet he's going to do a little playing kale is very fairly quick growing so if we put the kale in there our thought is it will continue to grow this fall and just you know stand out more kind of push the grass more upright and then the kale will just kind of probably get about 12 inches across so that way the kale will be more predominant than what it's seeming right now does it really matter what we're doing here no but we want to make for sure that you know we'll be able to see the plants the best that we can I think I like that so yeah so what we decided is is we've got the ivy up in the front then we have kind of more of a purplish colored kale and then we've got the heuchera fun and games I spy heuchera. or heucherella which is that chartreuse kind of yellow. So that stands out pretty good up against that dark grass. And then in the back is the mahogany monster, which will stand out nice against the heucherella. Another mahogany monster back there. And then 
the Hucarella I Spy. Hucarella I Spy gets really pretty pink flowers if you plant it in the garden and then like for summer blooms. So that not only has great foliage for year round, but also really pretty flowers during the summer. And there's another one of the purple kale that will go in there next to the ivy. So I think I'm going to move it around a little bit. I'm going to put two kale side by side. So he's going to tuck two kale in there side by side just because we have a little extra room and we want to make for sure that the planter is packed tight. I think too one thing the more we put around the edges it's also kind of forcing the grass to stand a little bit more upright if that seems to make sense at all but I mean if you are also planting for a number of weeks to finish I mean you wouldn't have to pack it near as fall but we know that for the most part once we get under 45 40 degrees this is Penicetum uh, fireworks and it will pretty much die off and go brown but the, at least the motion in the garden will still be there but you know we have a limited amount of time so we're packing it full someone else in the south or if you started earlier in the north I mean you could definitely as I got something crawling up my neck um something you could obviously not fill it as full and the kale would obviously get bigger that's true there's a bee on your shirt all right, so let's go in and take a closer look here at what he did. He's got to plant them in better here, but let's just look at the plants. So we've got the ivy there and the two kale, the hucarella I spy, heuchera mahogany monster, another I spy, some more kale, and then the ivy. So that will look really pretty. I think the grass is gonna be great because that's gonna add definitely motion, like he was saying. And I think whenever you have your planters, you really gotta think about you know the thriller, filler, and spiller aspect of it. And grass is a great thriller for a fall garden. This is Heidi and Rod from Garden Crossings.